if you thought that trying to write a biography of a 3rd century Roman emperor that ruled a few months was hard, well, you're in for a surprise. For today, I'll attempt to do a biography video on this very obscure figure. Not really obscure himself, as there's many videos covering the Battle of Abritus, his biggest feat, but really hard to locate before and after that renowned event. What we know about Niva comes from Roman sources, aka his enemies, hence why all that we hear about him must be taken with a pinch of salt, for most of these reports can be and will be biased against his figure. According to Jordanes, the source used to mention Ostrogoza, Niva was merely his successor, as this even most obscure figure, possibly mythical as a way for the 5th century Ostrogoths to justify their lineage, died around 249 or 250, just before the big conflict against Rome began. I will not dare to establish a direct paternal or even familiar relation between the two, as that's out of both Jordanes and my knowledge. But for Niva to have ascended so hastily, and for him to immediately form a 70,000 strong army and invade Moesia, it must mean that he was a respected Gothic leader even before Ostrogoth's death no matter if his son or completely unrelated. There's no reference to Gniva taking part in Ostrogoth's campaign against Machianopolis, while instead mentioning Argaitus and Gulceric, two figures that will fade into irrelevance once this whole ordeal is over. What can we learn from this? One, that Gniva must have, some, must have been somewhere else during this hypothetical invasion against Rome, and two, that if the previous wasn't the case, and Kniva was also under the command of Argaitus and Gunteric, there must have been some sort of power struggle between the three that resulted in Kniva's ascendancy. This is all theorizing from my part, but I believe that these are the two most reasonable options, assuming, as I'll reiterate once again, that Ostrogoza actually existed. If you have any other theories you'd like to share, don't hesitate to write them in the comment section, and I'll check them out. Regarding the future of Niva, as I mentioned, he will have the biggest role of his life in the defeat and killing of Emperors Decius and Erenius Etruscus in 251, managing to destroy several legions in the Battle of Abritus. However, this doesn't mark his end. Not much later, under Gallienus, another homogeneous group of gods and the Gepids, will attack the Balkans once again. These attacks were mostly made via boat, descending to the Aegean Sea and from there plundering the land, instead of crossing the Danube, so it's possible that Kniva didn't take part in the conflict. It must be noted that even though during the war that killed Decius, the gods were the leading party, in this one will be the Heruli who lead the charge, so it's quite probable that the leadership was distinct from the one ten years prior. A Heruli leader, Naulobatus, is mentioned by ancient sources, but nothing more is known about the leadership of that exact great. Finally, as an end to Niva's life, or maybe not, as sources disagree, we find a certain Canobaudes alive in 271, only to be captured and executed by Emperor Aurelianus. This uncertain Canobaudes is only mentioned in the Historia Augusta, a very unreliable source, however. Uh, but his name bears similarity with that of Niva, hence why some historians have connected the two. We must have in count that the events that take place under Aurelian are after a full 20 years following Niva's attack. Is it probable that Niva was ruling his confederation of Tervingi and Greutungi gods for around 20 years, still leading them into battle? Roman historian Tacitus, at around 75 of Forera, mentions how, when electing a chief, birth was always the most important factor, so it's possible that Niva was still young when he was elected, maybe even invading Rome for the first time in 250 to prove his value as successor of Ostrogoza. Whatever the case may be, he was now dead, and the gods would continue to pillage Rome for many centuries, eventually leading to the first sack of Rome in more than a hundred years in 410 at the hands of Alaric the Visigoth. Thank you for watching.